In an earlier video, I showed you an example of how to apply Kirchhoff's rules. In this video, I'd like to give you an alternate formulation of the rules and, and how to apply them. It's equivalent, it's just a different way of interpreting them and maybe more intuitive for some students. We're gonna use the same circuit we used in our earlier example. We've got two batteries, uh, one that has a five volt uh, battery and then another that's a three volt battery. And then we're gonna have three resistors. Uh, resistor one, which has 100 ohms resistance, a resistor two, which has a 50 ohm resistance, and then this resistor in the middle, which is 150 ohms resistance. Now, the way this alternative method works is we're sort of gonna pre-do the junction rule. And it works like this. We're gonna pick a loop. We're gonna start with a loop rule, as it were. We're gonna pick a loop. The direction of our loop still matters, but to that loop, we're going to assign a current. And that's where this gets different. So we're gonna assign a current, not to each branch, but to the loop itself. And then as we go around the loop, uh, the sum of changes in potential must remain. Uh, as we go from one point around the loop and we get back to the same point, we have to have no change in potential. So I'm gonna, pick two loops in my circuit. I see a, a loop at, on the top, and I'm gonna pick a loop with a direction, and I'm gonna assign it a current. In this case, I've assigned it current I1. And then I'm going to pick another loop. I see another loop in my circuit. It's the one on the bottom. I'm gonna assign it a current. That's current I2. And so the current in this bottom loop is I2. The current in this top loop is I1. I've picked clockwise as the direction for both of my uh, loops. Where this gets a little weird is you can see that R3 has two currents assigned to flow through it. And that might be a little strange to you, but really all you, you, can, you can just remember, well, really that means that I3 is going to be the com combination of the two that whatever current flows through R3 has to be the combination of the current flowing from the top loop and the current flowing the bottom loop. And I think if you remember that, then there's really nothing to get confused about here. Once we've assigned our loops and given, given them currents, and we have a direction for that loop as well, now we can begin to, we can pick a point in our loop and go around. I'm gonna choose the top loop. I'm going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And so I get a positive uh, potential change, just as before. So the rules about crossing elements stays the same. As I come around, I'm gonna hit R3. And so I'm going around R3 in the direction of I1. So that's a minus R3 I1. But at the same time, I'm going across R3 against the direction of I2. So that's a plus I2 R3. And you can see what, what this is really, if you put those together, we've got I2 minus I1 times R3. So like I said, the this would be I3, the current through R. Uh, that middle resistor is gonna be the combination of the two. As we come back around, then we hit the, uh, the first resistor. We're going through this resistor in the direction of the current, so we get a negative drop in potential. We get a, a drop in potential rather than an increase. And all that sum, we get back to the same point, so it has to equal zero, and we've written out our equation. The bottom one, we do the same thing. So I'm going around as I, maybe I start here, I'm going from positive terminal to negative terminal, so I get a drop in potential. I'm going through R3, my third resistor, that middle resistor, in the direction of I2, so I get a drop in potential. I'm going also through this middle resistor against the direction of the first current, so I get an increase in potential. And then as I come around, I'm going across my resistor in the direction of the current, so I get a drop in potential, and the sum of all those potential changes has to be zero as I get back to my starting point. And so 
you get two equations now with two unknowns and our third unknown right the the current in this third resistor we know has to be a combination of our two currents from there it's the same from there is the same once you've got your equations now it's two equations two unknowns um, we're going to try and make sure that there is at least uh, each unknown in our equation in this case i1 and i2 uh, is in it at least one equation um, and again really what we're looking for is linearly independent equations and uh, that's a, an idea from linear algebra which you might have already learned or you will learn in a future class once we get there then pick your favorite method to solve uh, whether it be substitution or addition of equations or if you're clever and you know how to do it linear algebra and we find the same results we found before uh, the current through this top loop is 0 0.2 uh, 0.02 amps the current through the middle resistor is the combination of current one and current two the current through the bottom loop is not existent it's actually not there which is again a little weird but what's essentially happening is um, this battery is producing a backwards EMF sort of a back current so that any current that that battery one tries to push down this branch is getting pushed back uh, so that no current flows in this bottom branch and if we combine those two together you can see that gives us our third uh, current the current through the middle resistor so the the solution then once we've got our equations ends up being exactly the same it's just getting our equations uh alters the way we apply kirchhoff's rules a little bit it, it gets rid of the junction rule and then just assigns a current to each loop and honestly you can pick whichever one you like if you like this method uh uh, for its simplicity then you can use it or if you like the junction rule for the way it it really matches the idea of energy conservation and and uh, conservation of charge uh, then you can use it pick the, whichever one you like with this you now have two ways in which you can analyze circuits you can either use uh, Kirchhoff's rules as stated in your textbook or you can use this alternate method and either way will get you the solution that you're interested in in another video I would like to present to you how to use linear algebra this will be again if you haven't studied linear algebra don't stress about using this method you can just use substitution or adding and subtracting to solve these Kirchhoff's rule uh, problems uh, and do circuit analysis but for those of you who have studied linear algebra, I'd like to give you an application of the principles of linear algebra that I think might uh, speed up some of these calculations. If you have any questions, come see me in, uh, and either in class or during office hours.